So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number two of our AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory series here in season number four specifically. I think this is episode number 28 or 29 in total, but we're in the second episode of our full season, our first season in the Premier League. Now, if you have missed the last episode, I'd urge you to go and check it out. It was an absolute blockbuster full of... Really, it was very, very entertaining. It's featured the game of the series so far, a new signing, and of course, it was the start of season number four. But today we'll be carrying on and we'll be jumping out probably of the transfer window. As you can see from the calendar, there's only two more games to play in this month, so I can't really justify spending that much longer in this window. I did, however, give you guys the vote for a goalkeeper to sign, and we'll get onto that in a moment. If you want to enjoy the video, slap a like on it and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And also, I want to say a massive thank you to One Football, who are sponsoring this video. They are a football news app where you can get your fixes and results for your favourite teams. Very useful now the Premier League is on the cusp of starting just four days away. Remember, you can check out all the results, all the news of your favourite team specifically on the One Football app. Link down in the description below. Now, I did mention a poll that you guys got amongst last episode, and it was to do with bringing in a new goalkeeper. The choices were Alfred Gomez here of Torino, Andre Morera from Atletico Madrid, Francis Uzoho, the Nigerian goalkeeper who plays for, I think, Deportivo in real life. He's joined Red Bull Salzburg on this save. And finally, the Manchester City backup goalkeeper, Angus Gunn. All of a similar overall, apart from Gomez, who was the best out of the lot, the man from Senegal. However, it wasn't Alfred Gomez that you guys chose. It was his African counterpart, Francis Uzoho, who won the vote by 55%. So over half of you, the, the actual majority of you, voting for us to sign this man here, the 21-year-old. There was also a second vote in that one to do with the budget that we have in this season. If you cast your mind back to episode one of season number four, you'll have known at the start of the year we were given just four and a half million pounds for our inaugural Premier League campaign which is utterly ridiculous. I don't know how, I don't know why. 81% of you saying I should add £6 million to the transfer budget. I was tempted to go higher just because of the pure amount of people that voted for that, but we'll stick to the valuation of £6 million. Yep, my game has decided to um, to update whilst I'm recording. That's, that's absolutely fine. Go ahead, you do that, mate. Not like I've got something to be doing right now. That's absolutely excellent, mate. Tried to go onto the catalogue and apparently I can't actually buy a financial takeover. There's none left. This episode's going swimmingly, is it? It's going brilliantly. Look how many Scout Future stars there are and apparently there's only two financial takeovers on the entire catalogue. You'll have to wait to see how we do into the transfer activity until after the first game of today's episode. However, we are up against Everton in this one, and as you can see, there is the squad in the background. Only one real change, that's that Andre Dozel is in for Mason Mount. Deji Oshalaja and Wayne Rooney lead the two teams out onto the pitch. That is interesting company. Quite contrasting careers, I feel both of them have had. But I'm hoping it's just as entertaining as that first game we had against Southampton, because that was a blockbuster of a fixture. We have actually played Everton, of course, in this series before, in an FA Cup tie. Uh, we just about came out victorious. I can't remember if we needed a replay. I don't think we did. I think we actually won the original game. Um, so we're hoping for similar things here. We might get an early chance straight off the bat with the Silva Lopez off the post, though, and cleared away. Here comes Williams down that right-hand side, and it'll fall all the way through for Christian Walton. Chuck it back out here to Dale Fry. Silva Lopez, Malambi, and then down the line here for the Silva Lopez, who can clip it over the top here. Alexander Sorloff is in, hasn't quite taken it in his stride, but it's now into Joel Azoro, and that is 1-0. We just about made it work, but Joel Azoro gets the goal, and we take the lead inside 12 minutes. It was a great move from defense to attack Dale Fry, getting the ball into the Silva Lopez. It was chipped back up, and then in the end to Alex Sorloff, didn't really take it in his stride, but did at least manage to get the ball over to Joel Azoro, and that is 1-0 to AFC Wimbledon here. 
Right, sorry, back. Just had to uh, kill a massive moth. This uh, this recording is in fact throwing up every single possible obstacle it could do at this point. Now, obviously, we took the lead early on against Southampton, even earlier than in this game, and it ended up with Southampton equalising several times, I think, in that game, actually. So we're hoping to hold on to the lead a little bit longer in this game. Meanwhile, Everton are still coming forward here with Gilfie Sigurdsson, who's turned past his man, and that is a goal for Gilfie Sigurdsson. The Icelandic international has equalised for Everton. Kelvin Smith came sliding across, could not get there. We'll wait to see if it's a good finish or whether it was saveable because it was from a decent distance out. Sigurdsson though just turns Dozell. Smith can't get across in time. Walton has gone with his wrong hand. And I think for a probably a fifth game in a row, Walton has conceded before making an important save. Bezic there out wide to Vlasic who cuts inside. Good work from him. This is Wayne Rooney blocked by Oshalaja. Good work from the captain. And we can come away and maybe start a counter-attack down the line. That's a great ball into Joel Azoro, who's now clean through on goal. Joel Azoro to try and give us the lead back, and he does. Defence to attack again. The counter-attack is on fire. One ball down the line, and Everton are split open. It's 2-1, and Joel Azoro has got himself his first goal in the Premier League. Calm and composed, despite a bit of pressure from Holgate under the finish. And we are back in the lead again. I'm actually going to time how long the gap was between Oshalaja blocking that shot and then us scoring. And I'll put it on the screen because that was a fierce, fierce counter-attack from AFC Wimbledon. We are, I'm liking the style of football we're playing actually in that sense. We are very fast flowing. This now is Andre Dozel. Nice little ball roll from him. Smith back into Andre Dozel again. Oh my word. What an effort. From the central midfielder, that looked as if it was going to be a great finish. Outside of the boot almost as well. That is so, so close. I've just realised, did I say Joel Azoro got his first goal in the Premier League when he scored his second goal? Even though he scored the first goal in this game as well. Oh, great ball into Nias there. And it was finished off. Would have been 2-2, but the striker was offside in the end, thankfully. Rooney there, challenged by Kelvin Smith. Great work from him. Doesn't care about status, he'll mow you down regardless. Now into Nias. There, loses the ball to Osha Larger. Counter-attack starting again. Malambi hasn't quite overrun that, and it's now Alex Sorloff. Everton are open, we're trying to punish them, and we have again Alex Sorloff with yet another counter-attacking goal for Wimbledon in this game. And ten minutes into the second half, we have doubled our lead. I thought Malambi had overrun that, but he still managed to find Sorloff, and he just slots it in to the bottom corner, calm and composed finish from Sorloff. Something that he's actually been lacking a little bit since he signed. In the championship, he was a little bit erratic. Missed a couple of chances in the first episode of this season as well. Our pace in our front three is absolutely electric. Joel Azoro and Malambi. Sorloff's got good pace as well, in fairness, but Malambi and Azoro are just uncatchable. It's it's absolutely unreal. And you even that's not even factoring in De Silva Lopez, who's got, I think, 97 sprint speed. So if Azoro managed to get a hat-trick in just his second Premier League game, that would be unbelievable. It might well happen, because De Silva Lopez has won this in a great position. This is Joel Azora with the long shot, and it forces a save out of Joel Robles. Corner then is about to be swung in. It's going to be De Silva Lopez, who will be putting it into the box. Sorloff has, well, he's got on the end of it, but he's nodded it the wrong way. Hector's then kept it in. Sorloff with the shot, saved by Robles again, and cleared by Janska. This is down the line again here for Azora, who's caused Everton so many issues in this game. It's absolutely ridiculous. He swung it to the back post for De Silva Lopez. That's into Sorloff. And it is four. Four one against Everton. We have been rampant. Rampant in this one. A brace for both of our strikers. Well done as well to De Silva Lopez for actually getting his head on that. To nod it down into Sorloff who first time volleys it in past Robles. He's not missing from there, is he, realistically? And Robles isn't saving it from there. Everton now coming forward with one last assault. Holgate, Vlasic, Sandra Ramirez blasted over. And that is the end of the game. 4-1. One more goal. It would have actually equaled our record for our biggest win in this series, but it is still a very solid performance regardless. Ratings-wise, no real surprise to the two strikers sharing the best rating. 9.5 for both of our braces, brace scorers. 
scorers. I don't know. Both of our goal scorers, Azoro and Soloff, both of them got two goals apiece. Guys, I've, I've played one game. I've played one game and I'm sweating my actual tits off. I can't, fam, this, this episode has been hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. Now, last episode, I pretty much posed a question as to whether you guys would be happy with me, like, uh, you know, negotiating for pretty much anyone in our team. And a lot of people were saying yes. On the most part, a lot of people were like, yeah, go for it, it's calm, might mix things up a little bit. I think for people like Dale Fry, we've got a bid here from West Brom of 8.7 million pounds. I'm gonna counter like 13. I know it's well above his valuation and that's fine. That's calm. I don't want to sell these players. I want to get good money for them if we're going to sell them. Is that too low? Well, I'll set the don't go less than to like 12. Well, it seems unfortunately we're not going to be able to do a financial takeover right now because I think people are, I think once you own an item, you can't even be sent it as a gift from the catalog and given you can't redeem items more than once, I just can't. I, I, seemingly, you, you can't redeem, like I've already redeemed all of the financial takeovers in the catalog, which is stupid. I don't know why you can't re I can't know why can you not redeem them more than once but I think we're gonna have to stick with the amount of money that we have right now the one thing we are gonna do now is bring in a goalkeeper because I was gonna do that at the start of the episode and we're gonna bring in hopefully Francis Uzoho now obviously it starts off with the exchange player are they interested in him they would be interested in him but for cash as well now, for a start, that is a ridiculous transfer sum to say that Christian Walton is worth pretty much 5 mil. Yeah, okay, let's go for that. Let's let's submit 4 mil. They want 6.6. .6. Okay, we'll go into the middle again and we'll go for 5.5. Let's stick into their guns. I mean, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you're getting on my nerves. So, we're, we're ma we are overpaying here. We're massive. We are overpaying. There's no way he should be worth that plus Christian Walton. There we go. 6.3 mil. Eventually, we've agreed on it. It's going to be 6.3 million pounds plus Christian Walton. In my opinion, we've overpaid. We've overspent there. We can now at least go into negotiations with Uzoho, but we're going to delegate it, obviously. He's on 13k at the moment, so I'm going to go for 18 and a half, and then don't go higher than 26 and a half. I don't think we really particularly need another starting 11 player right now. Well, that's a lie. We do. But we can't, we'd have to spend like, at this, we've now got, we've now arrived at the point where we're going to have to spend like 20 million pounds on a player if we want to improve a team. It doesn't look as if Dale Fry is going to be going out of the door then to West Brom. They were unwilling to pay 8.7 million pounds, which I think is what they offered in the first place. So very stingy. That's well below what I would accept. So unfortunately for us, I didn't get an email about it for some reason. I don't know why that's occurred. But um, Davide Felicioli was unwilling to go to Standard Liège, basically. Uh, they couldn't agree on a contract term, so I don't think that's him flatline rejecting going to Belgium. I think they were just not willing to meet his contract demands or wage demands or something like that. All right, beautiful. So Francis Uzoho has reached an agreement with our assistant manager, and it looks as if the Nigerian is going to become our second signing of this transfer window after Mason Mount came in from Vitesse Arnhem. He's wanting 21k in wages, important first team player and a three year contract length. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna accept that. 21k is a little bit above what I set at first, but it's a bit more than he's earning at Red Bull Salzburg, so it makes sense. It's still pretty low for what I imagine his overall is gonna be. I'll show you him in a second, but as you can see, after Mason Mount, Francis Uzoho is our second signing of this transfer window. He joins Wimbledon and that means Christian Walton goes in the opposite direction. This is how it has left us in terms of the transfer budget. You can see in terms of actual money to spend, we've got 558k, but that's quite skewed. We can put it probably over to about 1.2 million pounds. The way the catalogue works is just beyond my control, unfortunately. However, it is now time to take a look at Francis Uzoho. I'll show you his stats on the squad hub. He is obviously our new number one, and he's the same rating as Christian Walton. Very interesting. At 76 rated, to 21 years of age. It's a difficult one, really. It's, it's almost, in a sense, hard to justify because we've spent basically 6.3 million pounds on the same rated player, I suppose. 
Uh, Walton's obviously gone in the opposite direction. He's now in Austria playing for Red Bull Salzburg. Uzoho is now over here, and I'll show you his attributes in terms of his goalkeeping stats. 84 goalkeeping kicking. His handling is 79, so at least he'll be better at catching things. Positioning and diving a little bit low, so you might have to train that into him. Time now for game number two in this episode, and it sparks a debut for Francis Uzoho in between the sticks. We're going to see whether he's any better than Christian Walton. Overall wise, obviously they're the same, but in terms of performance, we might get a little bit more out of the Nigerian youngster. A couple of changes in the sense that Toby Brown, our best youth academy player, is in at left mid. He will try and continue to burst onto the scene in this one. And honestly, this season has been flipping sick so far, as far as entertainment is concerned. Even if we lost a couple of them, it's, we've still had goals galore. We've had, what, 12 goals from two games? Got an injury actually picked up here for Joel Azora, but it's not stopped him finding Toby Brown, who swings it in towards the back stick there to De Silva Lopez, it's deflected in! A very lucky goal for De Silva Lopez, but it's a goal regardless. And it's an early one again inside 10 minutes. De Silva Lopez scores, I think, his third of the season. It's deflected off the uh, Watford left back Denisov, and it's an assist for Toby Brown. Brilliant stuff, it's gone the complete opposite corner. It's bamboozled the poor goalkeeper, but I'm not even sure actually it was going in. But unfortunately, he's been unable to react and put another arm out. And it's in from De Silva Lopez. Ball in, should be dealt with by Florence. Isn't, bounces off Mount and it'll be a corner. Bit of a uh, defensive mix-up there between Florence and Mount. And Watford have got a chance to get an equaliser. Pereira in towards an unmarked Cabecele. And that could easily have been 1-1. Who was he being marked by? I think it was actually, in fairness, I think it was, was that Toby Brown? Smith there into Toby Brown, around the corner for Azoro. Now this is Alexander Sorloth, who's got a bit of space, deflected again. Almost found the bottom corner. And this now is Toby Brown inside for Malambi, outside for Joel Azoro. The counter-attack again, can try and cut it back to the South African. It's Mani Malambi on the volley, and it was spilled by Bachman, cleared away by Cabecele. Chalaber into Agbo. This is now Pereira. Good ball there into Andre Gray, and it's wide again from Watford. Another decent little opportunity on the turn from Andre Gray. Might have expected a bit better. That flick from Pereira was baffling. It's still Alexander Sorloth. Soloth, trying to get away from his man, Malambi, back to Soloth again, and it's Backman with the save. Malambi, Soloth, Azoro, Mason Mount's running in, it's Mason Mount to try and make it two, it falls to Azoro, and it is wide. Oh, he's got to put it on, he's got to put it on target, I mean, Mount probably should have scored, but Azoro has missed the very badly there. Poor Azoho, he probably signed up for a bit more action than this. So far, he's not had to make a save, though Watford have had a couple of chances in this game. Success there. Bulldozes his way past Hector, and it's a save from Uzoho. Good one as well, but Andre Gray was offside, so it didn't matter anyway. Couple of changes now to be made. Marnie Malambi is going to come off because he's a little bit tired and on a yellow card. He's going to actually be replaced by Mount in attacking midfield. And then we will see Aaron Bolger come on to replace him. Might well see a debut in the Premier League now for Lyle Taylor. Big moment for the Montserrat Messi. My guy, Lyle Taylor. The final, really, of the, of the proper Road to Glory players, if you like. This is the final man whose story has now been fulfilled. We've had Osha Larger, we've had Florence. Now we've got Lyle Taylor as well. Bolger there into mounts around the corner for Kelvin Smith, who lets fly and actually forces a good save at a backman. Now Cabasele over towards Pereira, now full quare and just over the bar. Nine minutes to go, Watford have got a free kick here, it's chipped in by Pereira, headed clear by Mount. Hector doesn't really deal with the danger, Florence doesn't either, and Richarlison hits the post. Hector just gets it anywhere and out for a throw-in. That is the end of the game, and we just about hold on to a 1-0 win. We are 3-3 three from three in the Premier League. A 100% record as my manager meets his doppelganger. Shots-wise, it was very even, but in terms of shots on target, we dominated, and that's why we won. The man who won us the game was the Silva Lopez. Unsurprisingly, he was your man of the match. 8.6 as well for Toby Brown. Of course, he got the assist and showed a lot of promise down that left-hand side. So it's transfer deadline day after that game there against Watford. To be honest, I don't expect us to do all that much. We don't have that much money. If we'd have sold Felicioli, I might have tried to bring in a depth player, but it's just a bit of an anti-climax that I guess as far as deadline day is concerned. And probably the one transfer window 
I'll ever look back on in this series and think that was a bit dead. Not gonna lie, I mean, we brought in Mason Mount, we brought in Uzoho, but did we really improve the side that much? Davide Felicioli wants to leave. Well, why didn't you leave when I accepted an offer for you from Standard Liège, you actual nonce? What's the point, fam? I literally... You could have left, you decided not to leave. And now you're saying you're not playing enough. That's why I was... Now it is time though for your final game of today's episode. I realise there's only three in comparison to the usual four, but obviously we've had some transfer activity as well. And we're going to be welcoming Liverpool to Plough Lane. This is our first proper big, big game, I feel, in the Premier League. Now, the result of this one is going to be uh, is going to be an interesting read, because obviously we shouldn't be winning this game. We probably shouldn't be winning all four of our first games in the Prem. So obviously what we're going to have to do is change the sliders if we win this game. I'll make sure to make it a lot harder and I'll also start picking the AI team. I just can't really be bothered to do it right now. They are one of three teams. In fact, we are two of the three teams with a 100% record so far. The only other one is Spurs. So as far as the start of the season is concerned, this is weirdly a bit of a clash of the Titans. Judging from this team so far, I would suggest this is not Liverpool's strongest starting eleven, and it's showing already. De Silva Lopez there cutting that one back for Kelvin Smith, blocked by Kovacic, he almost gets on the end of it. Dorzel there with the turn, Dorzel with the shot, but blocked by Ramsey. Salah shrugged off, no not quite, it's into Matteo Kovacic and saved by Francis Uzoho, his first big save in an AFC Wimbledon shirt from the number seven Matteo Kovacic, Chilivella back into Kovacic, the shot comes in, deflected was it? No, it went out for a direct goal kick, got lots of men ahead of him for company, Mo Salah is there to his right, but he's gone alone as Kovacic now finds Salah, all the challenge comes in from Hector, Salah gets past it and it's put in by Chilivella. The cutback from Salah, and it's put in by the Spanish youngster, who's not one of the better players in this side, although he's got an alright potential. But Liverpool have taken the lead, and we find ourselves behind for the first time, I think. Uh, Michael Hector comes in with a very, very weak challenge, and then a cutback is a good one from Salah. Mane here has escaped down the left-hand side. He's obviously got the beating of most. It's into Chilivella, cutback from Ramsey. And that probably should have been 2-0, and Aaron Ramsey knows it. Can't lie to you, I feel like we are missing Manny Malambi just a little bit. Smith just comes in and just brushes people aside. Ramsey, Kovacic again. We need to survive really till half-time at this point. Kovacic has got other ideas into Firmino and saved by Uzoho. Salah lets it go out for a corner. And a vital save from the Nigerian again. Dozel. Oh, Dozel's lost that in a dangerous position. This is Salah now. Still Salah, good step over from Mo Salah, but he drags the shot wide. Oh, good cut inside there. Ball across and Firmino makes it too. Far too easy. The right back, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's it's something like Leko, so we're just going to go for that. He's put it across and it's just far too simple. 2-0 to Liverpool. I mean, it's it's just, I mean, Michael Hector needs to do better there. Osha Larger needs to do better as well. He's allowed Firmino to just run in behind him. Uh, but Hector as well was so slow to react. Liverpool massively deserved this one, I'm not going to lie. We've been absolutely slaughtered by Liverpool at this point. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mount there into Sorloth. Round the corner for Joel Azoro. Can we try and make something happen? Sorloth there plays it through for De Silva Lopez. He's offside. He has scored, but the flag went up very, very early. This, I mean, this has been our biggest challenge so far in terms of how, you know, the ability of the side that we're facing, but... It's definitely shown. Ball in again. Sabitzer there with the header. Francis Uzoho is there to claim, though. And Hector's given that away in a dangerous position. He has been very poor in this game, in fairness. Salah plays it through, but cleared away by Mount. Can Sorloth nod it on? No, he can't. We've had no luck in this game at all. But also, you make your own luck, and we've played very badly, in my opinion. Dale Fry. This is Mason Mount going for the long shot, and it's just wide. Would have been at least a spectacular end to a disappointing game if the ex-Chelsea man had found the back of the net there. It's actually a very, very decent effort, and it could easily have found the, the back of the net, really. Ball in behind here again for Liverpool. Firmino is onto it. He's got men in the middle. He goes for it, and it comes across goal. Dale Fry needs to get it clear, and he just about has done with the slide tackle. Goes out for a corner. Massive mix-up there. There you have it. A disappointing 2-0 loss to Liverpool. It's what you would expect on the balance of these teams, and 
how the game went, I mean, Liverpool fully deserved that. Like, they were so, so much better than us in that game. But I don't think we played to the best of our abilities either. I think even if we had done, Liverpool played very well. But there you have it. No surprise that nobody on our team got man of the match. But your best rating was Mason Mount. Uh, I'm not even going to include Dozel in that because I thought he was very, very average in that game. But... I'll give it to Mason Mount. He's probably deserving. He was one of the better players in the team. De Silva Lopez was all right as well, to be fair. So it's early days, obviously, in the Premier League. But as things stand, we're sitting pretty in P3 at the moment on nine points. Obviously being served our first loss of the season to the currently unbeaten and 100% record Liverpool at the top of the table. Spurs in second. Chelsea and Manchester United just behind us. And Arsenal all the way down in the relegation zone at the moment in P18. In the background now, you'll be seeing the Hall of Fame where all the records and accolades are kept for this series, including youngest goal scorer, youngest player, best goal scorer, most assists, most appearances, and all of that good stuff. And in the top right of the screen, you'll now be able to vote for your player of the episode. Despite that disappointing loss against Liverpool, there will be plenty of contenders, given the first two performances against Watford, and also that brilliant game against Everton, where we won by three goals. So feel free to vote in that one, and the winner of the poll will play in every single game of the next episode. That, though, is going to do it from me. I apologise you haven't seen the usual four games or, you know, more sim games in this episode, but it's because of the transfer activity and it's also because it's 1am and I'm living at home now, so I can't... It's a bit late, I'm not going to lie, so I can't really go much further, but it is what it is. I'll be back with another Blockbuster episode next time. If you've enjoyed this one, though, slap a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It's the big red button under the video, and it really, really helps me out. Again, approaching 65,000 subscribers at the moment, which is absolutely insane. Thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. There's a mosquito. Why is there so many flipping bugs in here? As I was saying, though, thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. You can check out that app down in the description below. Below. You can also follow me on social media these days too. My Twitter handle is at the official FNG. My Insta is the same. Links are down below. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. I've been smoking and drinking. Yeah. Say the weed and the voice got me thinking skeptical. Boy, you better know when I'm under the influence. If I say shit, then I meant it all. Had a flashback when I used to kick ball. When the coach told me I went technical. Man, I lost all the air in my lungs and it's like man took a low blow to the testicles. Now you see the spare time I invested all yeah. to the music. Dug deep, now I'm seeing improvements. Spill force on the ink on the page and it feels therapeutic. Yeah.